Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. The title design logo seen in the sci-fi movie trailer for 65 is simple but powerful and effective. I thought it would be fun to show you how to recreate something similar in Photoshop from scratch. I provided a font that's similar to the movie's logo. It's not the exact font, but for the purposes of this video, it's fine. Its link is in my video's description or project files. Before we begin, if you want to be notified as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, hit that subscribe button. Create a new document by going to File and New. Make its width 3840 pixels, its height 2160 pixels, and its resolution 72 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. If the background color isn't white, open the flyout list and click white. Then click create or open. We'll create black horizontal bars at the top and bottom to give our cinemagraphic image an aspect ratio of a widescreen theatrical format. Click the lock icon next to the background to unlock it. We'll create a new layer below it by control or command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill it with black, but before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Black should be our foreground color. To fill our empty layer with the foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Next, we'll place the top layer into a folder by making it active and pressing Ctrl or Command G. We can tell it's inside a folder because the layer is indented to the right. Go to View, Guides, and New Guide Layout. If you don't see guidelines, press Ctrl or Command H. Check Rows. The number of rows is 1. Check Margin. For the top and bottom, type in 4 inches. And for the left and right, type in 0 inches. All other fields should be empty. Go to View. If Snap isn't checked, just click it to activate it. Open your rectangular marquee tool and make sure the Add Selection icon is active. This allows us to add selections as we make them. From the top left corner, Drag across the rectangular selection to the bottom right corner of the upper guideline. It'll snap in place because we have snap checked. Drag another selection from the bottom to the top right corner of the lower guideline. Alt or Option click the layer mask icon to make an inverted layer mask next to the folder. Now all the layers we place inside the folder will be visible only within the white middle shape and will be masked out or hidden in the black shapes at the top and bottom. The mantra in layer masks is white reveals and black conceals. Hide the guidelines by pressing Ctrl or Command H. Make the white layer active. Click the foreground color to open the color picker and in the hexadecimal field type in 3, 0, 8, 2, 9, 2. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. We'll increase the size of the clouds by pressing Ctrl or Command T to open the Transform tool. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This links them together. In either field, type in 300%. Then press Enter or Return twice. Because the clouds are three times its original size and extends way past our visible canvas, we want to crop off the excess to save file size. To do that, press Ctrl or Command A to select our visible image and go to Image and Crop. Then press Ctrl or Command D to deselect it. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Hide the copy and make the original clouds active. We'll make an inverted layer mask next to it 
by Alt or Option clicking the Layer Mask icon. Open the Brush tool and invert the colors by pressing X on your keyboard. White should be our foreground color. Open the Brush Picker. Pick a soft, round brush. The size is 3200 pixels. The hardness is 0% and the opacity and flow are both 100%. Center your cursor approximately here and click once. The reason we're seeing the clouds on the bottom is because they're being revealed through the white portion of the layer mask that we brushed in with the brush tool. Next, we'll brighten the bottom of the clouds. Make a new layer. Change its blend mode to overlay and reduce its opacity to 50%. Click the foreground color and pick white. Open the brush picker and make the brush's size 2000 pixels. Place your cursor approximately here and drag your brush across. Make the clouds copy active and make a new layer above it. We'll place our text in this layer. Open your horizontal type tool and type picker. Open the font I provided. By the way, this font was designed by Larissa Volker. I provided a link whereby you can thank her if you want with a small donation. If you use another font, just make sure it's thick and heavy. Make the size 1296 points, which is the largest we can make it. The aliasing is smooth and the alignment is centered. Click on your document and type out your text. To adjust the space between the characters, highlight them and press Alt or Option and the right or left arrow key on your keyboard. We'll make it bigger by clicking the Move tool and opening the Transform tool. Make it approximately this big. To center the text on our document, press Ctrl or Command A to select it in its entirety and press the Align Horizontal Centers icon and the Align Vertical Centers icon. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Reduce the fill to 0%. This makes our text invisible, but it'll retain all the layer styles we'll be momentarily adding to it. Double click the text layer to open its layer style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is inner bevel, the technique is chisel hard, and the depth is 200%. The direction is up, the size is 7 pixels, and the soften is 0. The angle is 112 degrees, and the altitude is 10 degrees. The glass contour is linear. The highlight mode is linear dodge, the color is white, and the opacity is 100%. The shadow mode is linear burn, the color is black, and its opacity is also 100%. Click Contour. Open the Contour Preset list and click the gear icon. If the small or large list isn't checked, click either one. Scroll to Ring and click it. Make the range 100%. Next, we'll add the clouds texture inside our text and then darken the top portion and brighten the remaining clouds. Make the clouds copy layer visible and active. Control or Command click the large T of your text layer to select its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the clouds copy layer. Make a new layer. In this layer, we'll brush in an arc of black to fade out the clouds inside the top of our text. To restrict the black brush stroke to paint just inside our text, we'll need to clip this layer to the layer mask below it. To do this, hover your cursor between the two layers, and when it changes into a clipping mask icon, click it. Notice the empty layer is now indented to the right, which indicates it's a clipping mask. Another way to clip it is to go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. We'll invert the colors by pressing X on our keyboard so black is our foreground color. Press B to open back your brush tool 
and reduce its size approximately this much relative to the size of your text. Brush across the top of your text. Next, we'll brighten the clouds inside the text. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Clip it to the same layer so it'll just affect inside the layer mask. Drag the Input Highlights level across to approximately 75, or you could just type it in. The following steps will add our final effect of creating a light flare sliver at the top of our image. Make the text layer active and make a new layer above it. We'll fill it with black, and since our foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Change its blend mode to Screen. This blend mode essentially makes pure black disappear, and the remaining tones from pure white to all shades of gray will show through. Go to Filter, Render, and Lens Flare. The brightness is 50%, and the lens type is 105mm prime. Drag the flare to here, so the secondary flares are seen approximately here in the preview window. Press V to open your Move tool, and drag the flare to here. Click the Adjustment Layer icon, and click Solid Color. In the hexadecimal field, type in 3082923. Which is the same color as the clouds. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Change its blend mode to color. Make the lens flare active and open your transform tool. We'll stretch out the lens flare to give it a wide angle cinemagraphic look. At the top, click off the chain link icon between the transform's width and height. Place your cursor over the W for its width and click and drag the scrubby slider to the right until it's anywhere between 150 to 160 percent. Then press Enter or Return or click the check mark. Position it approximately here. Lastly, we'll decrease the brightness of the secondary flares. Press B to open back your brush tool and reduce its opacity to 50 percent. Place your brush over the secondary flare and click twice. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.